Hey everyone, my name is Aaron the Wolf, and welcome back to the Sonic Retrospective. Now that the four classic Sonic games have been covered in detail, I want to do a video where we take a look at two of classic Sonic's more interesting games. Those being Sonic the Fighters, released in arcades in 1996, and Sonic R, released one year later on the Sega Saturn. Both of these games have an interesting history within the Sonic fandom, as they are both considered mediocre and or bad altogether. But is that necessarily true? Well, not to spoil the video, but yeah, they kind of are. Then again, I guess I shouldn't be too hard on these games. They were, after all, branching the series out to see what successful spin-offs they can make. So let's dive right into these mixed bags, shall we? I'm Aaron the Wolf, and this is my combo review of Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R. Alright, so Sonic the Fighters was conceived by Sega arcade developer Yu Suzuki, after he saw one of his fellow programmers add a Sonic model into another one of Suzuki's games, fighting Vipers. Yu approached the head of Sonic Team Yuji Naka with the idea, and after seeing how smooth Sonic's model fought in 3D, Yuji gladly agreed to work on the project. And thus, Sonic the Fighters was released in arcades in 1996, with a Sega Saturn port planned, but was ultimately cancelled since the console technology just wasn't there at the time to play the game well. Now, the concept of a Sonic fighting game is by no means bad. In fact, on paper, it's a great idea. What kid back in the 90s wouldn't want to play a Sonic fighting game? Unfortunately, Sega never really dabbled in that idea very often with the only other attempt being Sonic Battle on the Game Boy Advanced. Of course, nowadays we have Sonic in the Smash Brothers series, which I plan on doing a retrospective for someday, and some fan-made Sonic fighting games. So how well does Sonic the Fighters hold up? Eh, well, okay, let's talk about the good stuff first. Graphically speaking for the time, Fighters looks great as far as 3D arcade games go. The art style matches the Genesis games quite well, and all of the character models, though definitely polygonal, look really good for arcades back then. Granted, Tekken 1 and 2 were released way before it, and even Sega had made fighting games like Virtua Fighter in 1993, but as far as cartoon fighting games were concerned, Fighters was ahead of its time. The environments are also really well made. They all look like they came straight out of a stage from the classic Sonic games, which I really appreciate. Moving on to the roster, of course we have characters like Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and even Espio the Chameleon from Knuckles Chaotix. <laughs> get it? Because chameleons can camouflage? And his name is Espio? As in... Espionage? <laughs> anyway, this game was the introduction of Team Hooligan, which consisted of Fang the Sniper, Bean the Duck, and Bark the Polar Bear. These characters would later go on to be characters in the Sonic comics produced by Archie Comics and written by Satan. I mean, Ken Penders. But enough about the design, how exactly does the game play? Well, the base wa- The base, the base, the base, 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 base. I just went to a different accent all of a sudden. Well, the best way I could describe it is like this. Imagine if someone who was a button masher at traditional fighting games wanted to make a game that he could be good at with just button mashing, and then you'd get this game. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you guys, this game takes virtually no skill at all. The game was specifically designed so that inexperienced players could win without much effort, which honestly isn't a good design choice. Sonic the Fighters is a 3D fighter where you punch the other guy until you delete their health. Trust me when I say that this is not Tekken here, no, not a chance. Tekken is a game that requires careful positioning and a good knowledge of what attacks to use and when to either perform them or block. In Sonic the Fighters, however, you could just simply spam the save button over and over until the opponent falls over. And this is what it's like for 90% of arcade mode. But that doesn't mean the AI doesn't like to be nasty though, because some characters like to abuse the same move over and over as well, mainly the grab with how much damage it does. This makes the gameplay as a whole one giant cluster truck to play, and frankly there really isn't any reason for experienced fighting game players to pick this game up. Sonic fans may enjoy this, but I can't imagine them not getting bored after 20 minutes with how basic the game is. Real quick though, can I just say how much of a cheap bucket of bolts Metal Sonic is? He has pretty much every issues that final bosses in fighting games had at the time. Moves that he doesn't telegraph at all, he loves to abuse his stupidly strong grab, and frankly he was just designed to steal kids' quarters. Thank god I'm playing this game on the gems collection on the GameCube. So yeah, I can't find any substantial reason to play this game. 
fighting game players won't like how easy it is to win this game, and Sonic fans would most likely get bored before long. In short, Sonic the Fighters is a valiant but ultimately failed effort, and I would not recommend you play it. And with that said, let's move on to the more interesting game of the two, Sonic R. So, Sonic R. Quite the game indeed. Out of these two games, this one is definitely more infamous, for various things. Mainly the out-of-place soundtrack and the introduction of the Tails doll, which had several stories, or as they were called, creepypastas about it. Hey, it was a different time. Besides that though, is Sonic R as bad as everyone says it is? To some extent, yes, but I also think that it's just kind of dull all around. Let's start with the positives, as few as they may be. Firstly, the graphics in this game are fairly decent for 32 bits. Sonic and the gang all look like themselves, and I've honestly seen worse games than this, but to be honest, that's the most positive thing I could say about this game. Everything else is pretty garbage. Right down to how the game controls, Sonic R's controls are very stiff when playing with just the joystick, making turning tight corners nearly impossible without using the triggers to move. But that's just the version on the Gems Collection. If you were playing this on an actual Sega Saturn, you'd have to use a D-pad. God have mercy on those kids. And even past the controls, the game only has five tracks. Yes, five. What kind of kart racer only has five tracks in it? Super Mario Kart, which came out five years earlier, has more tracks than this. Heck, even Mario Kart 64 came out before this. The point I'm trying to make is that there's no excuse to only have five tracks. But I guess maybe that's because of how open these tracks are, with many alternate routes to take as well as shortcuts. You can even find the seven Chaos Emeralds to unlock more characters, including Super Sonic as well as the dreaded Tails doll respectively. Now how about that soundtrack, eh? Doesn't it just feel out of place? I mean, for what it's worth, it sounds decent. The vocals performed by TJ Davis actually sound pretty good, all things considered. That said, it's the fact that a soundtrack like this is in a Sonic game is what bugs people. Sonic's signature music genre has been something similar to J-pop, however in games like Sonic Adventure it would soon be changed to rock and roll, which I find to be the best music genre for the series. That said, the music genre they chose for this game still feels very out of place. It's like hiring Wiz Khalifa to make a rap song for kids from of Sonic- oh wait a minute. but. Yeah, to be honest, there really isn't too much to this game. I did say this was a more interesting game than Sonic the Fighters, which it is, but outside of the soundtrack and the gameplay, what more is there to talk about? It took me less than 30 minutes to get to first place in all five tracks, which is bare bones for a kart racer. So yeah, all things considered, I don't really have any strong feelings about this game. Not even hatred or dread, it's just there. But I figured I would at least talk about it since it did come out before Sonic Adventure 1 did on the Dreamcast, so I thought it'd be fair to at least give these games a look. In short, yeah, these games are technically bad, but frankly, not bad enough to make such a fuss about. They're just there. And yeah, with that said, I'm Aaron the Wolf, and I hope you all have a good day. Stay strong, and live life.